hi everyone welcome back to another edition of moments with lulu if you are new to my channel please make sure you're subscribed so you're getting notifications whenever i put up a new video and for those of you who have been following me and always coming back to watch my videos thank you so much for always supporting me and supporting this channel today's video is going to be specific to international high school students who are looking at pursuing an education in nursing so in this video, I just want to give out some tips to high school students. So it doesn't really matter whether you're an international high school student or a domestic high school student, but this video is catered more towards international students who wish to come to nursing school straight from high school because the requirements and what you need varies a lot. And there's a lot more required from you, not just in terms of tuition and the ability to fund your degree so in this video we're going to explore all of those tips so if you think that you're one of those people who you know are seriously interested in schooling like um, a brother pursuing a nursing education in canada or somewhere else i feel like this video is going to be very helpful to you while you're still back in high school or secondary school so if you are interested in a video like this if you know anyone that's going to benefit from this video please make sure to share and don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment and any other question that you feel like you probably have please feel free to leave it in the comment section of this video and i'll be happy to answer the questions first and foremost if you're looking to school anywhere if you're looking to school abroad or looking to even school within your home country the first and foremost thing you want to do is your personal research because you need to know of course like research does not necessarily have to be going onto your computer research could be asking around finding information from people calling you know emailing it does not always have to be sitting in front of a computer and going on google research is beyond that and of course if you want to research on schools you need to research on tuition you need to research on again academic requirements that they need for that particular program or that particular course or that particular university because every school every college every university has like a standard for each program so whatever a nursing program requires would never be the same as whatever an engineering or a medical or a pharmacy program will require you get what i'm saying so you just want to make sure that you're going in there to do your research because even if they are the same university they might have a general requirement for the university but a specific requirement to the program specific you're looking to apply to so it's always important to know what the general requirements of the university and the program specific requirement that you're looking to pursue an education in. and you also need to make sure you're checking for accreditation of course if you're doing a program you don't want to go into a school and then at some point you find out that the program is not accredited again looking up tuition because different schools get out to different needs in terms of finance so you need to look up tuition so for something you can afford and not only afford in the first day but you can sustain or you have a plan on how you're going to sustain yourself for the duration of that study also you want to research on the gp of the school for that particular course so each program will definitely have a required grade because that will also play a huge role in your application to the school and again something to note is that you don't just apply to one school don't just research one school at the same time it's always good to you know broaden your horizon like explore your options just in case this one doesn't work for any other reason it may not be gpa it may not be um, tuition it may be something else or it may be a combination of a lot of things so you just want to make sure that you have that specific criteria to get into that particular program you're looking to go into and again if you're in your second to last year of high school so basically that's called ss2 back home my home country in nigeria so if you're in your ss2 that is probably the best time for you to start doing your personal research and towards the end of your senior secondary school too so towards the end of your ss2 or towards the end of your grade 11 that is where you want to take advantage and start applying for early admission because early admission is very good like it comes with a lot of benefits like you have more time you can look into like scholarships you can look into bursary that you might benefit from and again with early admission there's always like a final admission deadline because even if you get admitted early there's still a final admission deadline because they also expect you to maybe provide uh, your transcript for your last one year of high school so your ss3 or your ss or your grade 12 something like that but don't shy away from the fact that you're not done with 
senior secondary school or high school and say it's not the best time for you to apply it's seriously the best time for you to apply so always take advantage of early admission and something i really find good about early admission is that if you're doing it in your senior school year maybe before your ss2 you're more motivated like you're motivated to do well academically in your high school because depending on a variety of factors your gpa plays a major role in if a university is going to accept a high school graduate because thinking about it the transition from high school to um, university is very vast and it's not it's not an easy transition academically but just thinking about it and researching it at that onset that early stage will push you will give you the motivation to like you know i need to get this done so that's something you need to take into consideration make sure to start applying early early research on your own and with let's say a support person maybe your family member or whoever is supporting you in the process will go a long way for you you also need to make sure that you're again i talked about it so researching on the program specific so not just the university requirements but that of the program because is that program that's going to accept you to take their program so basically if you're applying for nursing and you have a gpa of let's say 3.0 and that's what the faculty requires. Of course, you're going to get it if that is their only criteria. You also need to meet this general requirement for the university as well, but the program is super important. So make sure you familiarize yourself with both the program specific and the university in general. So I talked about um, going for early admission and the transcript, submission of transcript twice. I mean, this was a process I went through anyways because I applied um, in my secondary school too and I had to provide transcripts twice. So if you're applying straight from high school right before your last class of high school, what you request is that you provide your transcripts of your previous secondary education up until your SS2, so up until your grade 11. And when they give you an early admission, they also give you a final deadline for when you also need to provide, let's say you have one more class, you have a class in progress, which is your SS3. They also need you to provide a transcript for that particular class because they also know that you went for early admission and they also need you to provide your YEC at a certain deadline, which they will definitely let you know because by then they expect you to have written your YEC and to have been done with your senior secondary school three so that would be something important to note another thing is that some schools or well canada to the best of my knowledge will ask you for an english language proficiency exam also just knowing that you're applying to a nursing or to a health sciences program so for the most part if you apply to a health sciences program english language proficiency is really really important i don't know about other faculties i don't know about any other program this is very specific to the nursing program they usually ask you for english proficiency exam so it could either be the ilts or the toefl so if you're in your senior secondary school too you want to ensure that you are putting your application for early admission and you also want to ensure that the duration of time that you take your ilts is around that September to December of your senior secondary school three. So if you put in your application at the end of your SS2, that first um, semester, that first term, because there are three terms for your senior secondary school three as well. So the first term of your senior secondary school three is the time you want to ensure that you're preparing for your IELTS and you want to take your IELTS around maybe October, November, and you know send your score to the university as well because they require a certain score in different programs will require different um band scores for the ILTS so depending on whatever it is and of course they'll always let you know on the university's website the program specific website it's there like the what they require for your ILTS and your TOEFL it's on that website and if you're not sure at any point you can always call the university or the faculty specific just inquire and like you know you're not missing any information and you want to start early as well to prepare for this exam at an early stage just so you're not running out of time or being delayed for whatsoever reason another important tip if you're looking to study abroad if you're looking to study nursing in a place like canada i would always advise to always 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 
check for the contact information, either be it email or be it phone number. So you want to ensure that you are contacting the faculty specific if you have any question regarding their program because they are the ones to you know say yes this person qualifies to be in our program so at any point of the application process always contact the faculty like every website i know like i've seen in terms of like schools or education they always have like their socials their phone number their email their address their location it's public and you can always contact them at any process of your application and you feel like you're lost or you probably don't know what this is asking always contact them because they'll always help you regardless even before the start of your application you can also like you know call or email just to like you know set that stage or to know what what is required because sometimes reading the information of a paper or online might not really make a lot of sense to you so for some people they also need like one-on-one -on -one, like that in-person contact to really you know understand and get the info another tip is to start early to apply for your visa so there's no need to wait to apply for your visa considering the amount of time it takes the immigration to process one's visa so for example apply somewhere around june or july of the year where you're looking to travel it's a good time i applied in july end of july and i got my visa in september somewhere around the first week of september so it took exactly seven weeks for me to get my visa documents and just make sure that when you're applying for a visa application you have your admission offer to give to the immigration people because you need to show them you need to show a proof of why you're going and again always make sure that you're looking on the immigration website to know what the requirements are because your university has no control of the immigration another tip is to make sure to extend your passport expiry dates to the maximum you can before you apply so what i mean by this is anyways don't be like me because my passport was going to expire in about a year or two or so around there but it was a short time i still went ahead and like put in my application and it was more stressful going for a new passport going for a new social insurance number going for a new study permits, student work permits, like going for everything new because your passport has expired. The reason you don't want to do this is because the immigration will give you the dates on your passport. So normally, if the Nigerian passport is supposed to expire in the next four years from the day, let's say I applied today in, I applied for your passport today and the expiry date says four years from 2020, which is probably 2024. You want to make sure you have that maximum time because the immigration will count your education, like so your degree. So if it's a four-year degree, they are going to give you the four, whole four years, provided that your passport is going to expire in 2024. If that makes sense. So if your passport is probably expired around 2022 or 2021, end of 2021, December or 2022, September and you're going to apply for a four-year degree and you've submitted your application to the immigration. The immigration is going to give you a length of stay from the day your visa was approved. So if your visa was approved September 2020 and your, your, your passport is set to expire September 2022, the immigration will give you from September 2020, the day it was approved, up until September 2022 so two years and what is going to be required of you is if you come and you're schooling and prior maybe at least six months before your um, passport expires because once your passport expires every other document your student permits work permits um, social insurance number health card all those important government documents will also expire at the same time as your passport so it's stressful sometimes just trying to like renew it and if you have the opportunity to extend your passport before you apply for your visa that would be very awesome because you don't have to go through that stress of coming and then it's one year of your stay and you're going around that visa sometimes it's, it's stressful depending on how long it takes to come depending on maybe finances maybe you have to finish paying up your tuition as an international student before your faculty agrees to give you a letter to send to the immigration to say that yes she's going to continue her education so this is a support letter so for a variety of factors you just don't want to go, to go through that because i've been there and it wasn't even funny for high school students as well for secondary school students you want to do well in your courses in high school especially in your sciences and your maths courses as well 
and also English. Yeah, you really want to do well in these courses because, again, besides looking at your GPA, the faculty or the school also be interested in looking at those math and science courses. You also need to know that assessment of your application can only be done when you've submitted the application. Yes, when the application has been filled and completed and submitted. That is when an assessment can be done to know if you qualify for an admission. And lastly, never forget to have a solid financial plan and a good social support system when you're going to somewhere else for adaptation because the transitioning process, that phase is never easy on anyone. Be you a child, an adult or whoever at what stage you are, it's difficult to live your culture, your family, your home country, where you've known all your life and then go to somewhere else. And so many things are strange. So many things you need to learn, you need to come to reality with. It's important that you have a support system that can, you know, assist you in this phase. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling emotional, you can always reach out to these people. And having a solid financial plan is so important. Trust me, you don't want to be having your education and getting dragged or drawn back by one semester by two semesters by a year by an academic year it's no fun at all like owing intuition phase because it's just not fun i've been there so it's not so yeah that brings me to the end of today's video if you have any other questions video ideas whatever you think i didn't explore really well in this video feel free to comment that in the comment section of this video and i'll be sure to answer all questions so thank you all for watching see you in my next video bye now